Good morning, Grace Point. Thanks for joining us online for our Christmas service this morning. As we begin worship, as we begin praising Jesus this morning, I want to call to your remembrance the reason why we celebrate during the holiday season. It's the gift that Jesus is to the world, the gift that our Heavenly Father gave to us. As we continue to live and experience that gift, um, during this time we also experience a, a symbolism of giving as well. So as we pray and as we worship, just be thinking about Christ and the gift that he is. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you that you are here. We thank you that your love is evident. We thank you that we can worship you no matter where we are. We thank you for sending your son. We thank you for being the most powerful and moving gift and experience that we could ever come to know. It's your name that I pray. Amen. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Oh, come let us say. 
Hey, good morning. Merry Christmas. I'm glad, hoping that you have a blessed, you're having a blessed holiday. As we looked through the year last year and planning for this year ending, we saw that it was time for us to um, be able to do something online, for, so give our leaders some time off. So I'm hoping you're enjoying your time off. 
Um, it's been a special year for us, and really, I don't know where you are. I wanna, I'm going to just share a Christmas story with you this morning, but I know our tradition is you have your PJs on, um, and you're either eating or you're watching TV or you're just fellowshipping. So really, uh, I took mine off just to be here this morning to get and, uh, wish you a Merry Christmas. Love you guys. Um, what we're going to do is share just a Christmas story. We know we've been talking about the gift, the greatest gift that we've received um, over 2,000 years ago, the gift of Jesus Christ. And we're able to talk about how special that gift is. And I hope today that I unpack some of this. You know, it was Christmas. We've been waiting all year, especially if your kids have been waiting all year for the gifts to show up and what it's going to be, anticipation of something great this day. And, and I remember us growing up uh, waiting for gifts and getting our bicycles and getting all the toys that we wanted to get. And we never, my mom and dad never disappoint us. And I know how God never disappoints us as we're giving, as he gives out the greatest gift, which is Jesus Christ. And this morning, really, I was just going to share a story in um, Luke chapter 2, uh, 25 to 32. You probably know this story. It's about Simeon. Uh, Jesus, is about eight. Jesus has been born. Uh, he's about eight years old. He's fallen through with the uh, laws of Moses. He's actually getting, um, being dedicated in the temple, um, being circumcised, being dedicated in the temple. Some way we dedicate kids here today. And Simeon has been waiting for the coming one, the Messiah. And he even asked God, he prayed, let me stay alive long enough to see that the, the, the Savior come. And he actually did a song. And every encounter with Jesus as a baby, you'll realize through Elizabeth, through Mary, Zachariah, and the angels, was always, always produce a song. And when they saw what we call a song, this is called Simeon's song. And we're going to start in verse, uh, chapter, Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 32. He said, Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, which is the Messiah. And the Holy Spirit was upon him and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would see death. He would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in his spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory and for the glory and to your people, Israel. And this is Simeon waiting and God keeping his promises. But you see in this story that you see the Holy Spirit uh, assured Simeon, but he also led Simeon to the exact spot in the exact time. Whenever you read the Christmas story, you got to read it in a way that it's more than just natural things happen. God intervened to bring everyone to Jesus, to let them know that Jesus was being born, that the Messiah was being born. It's hard to do that on our own, but God always seems to lead us. And the Holy Spirit led Simeon uh, to the exact place and the exact time uh, to see what he had promised him years ago. And that's the greatest thing about active waiting. He was able to wait. He waited, he prayed, and he was believing God for it. So never discount the story. It's just a regular story. It's actually a little deeper than that. It's God um, decided to become man, called the incarnation, come down to earth. But he had to um, help people find who he is, find where he is, and find out who he is. And he does that through the Holy Spirit. And I think he does that today with us in our daily walk. We discover new things about God, but the only way I can discover new things about God is through the Holy Spirit. There's three things I want to unpack on there when you look at this gift of Jesus being born. First one is we see that Jesus is the salvation of God. And we're going to get down to about verse 30. Jesus is the salvation, which I'll save you. He said, for my eyes have seen your salvation, that you are prepared in the presence, in the presence of all people. And what we're saying is answered prayer. He was praying for when you see Jesus, you see when you see him, let me put it this way, for Jesus to come was for God's salvation to come. God had a plan to redeem man. And it's Jesus. When you see Jesus, you see salvation. This was God's plan being unwrapped. And before Simeon's eyes, before the world's eyes, which we get to celebrate today, Um, the gift that we received from heaven, from our father 
to bring us back into relationship with him, with Jesus. He is the salvation of God, how God took the action to do that. Second one, if you see this, Jesus is the revelation of God. 32a says, a light for revelation to the Gentiles. Now, we're down a, a fancy word, illumination and revelation, which you have to be able to see through darkness of our world, see so it can be revealed. And you must see, must be seen before it can be revealed. Now, it takes me back to if you've ever been, um, if, you're a far, if you're a hunter and you hunted at night and you probably later on in life, we have what we call night vision goggles. And night vision goggles, so it's dark, you can't see, and you had the moon sometimes, sometimes you didn't have the moon. Well, it had a way when you put them on, you're able to see in the dark what others can't see without these goggles. And when you put the goggles on, if you're hunting or anything else you're doing, you can see the, the subject in front of you. You start to, uh, it starts to reveal a lot of things around you that you couldn't see in the regular dark. Well, you know, that's how the Holy Spirit works with us. He, he brings light. Jesus brought light through the Holy Spirit and then also reveal who Jesus really is. He was more than a baby. He was the one that take the sins upon the earth for us. He was the perfect gift from heaven. And do like we need the Holy Spirit, like we need in, in, in this dark world, we have to see, we all have to, the Holy Spirit help us see what other people don't see. And you'll see in this story that he revealed who God is to Simeon. Others seeing Jesus as a baby, others seeing Jesus as a threat, others discounted him, others dismissed him, but Simeon welcomed him. More than the fact that even his mother and Joseph had no idea Though they had a, a glimpse, they had no idea the revelation of what Jesus was going to do on the earth. And he revealed that to Simeon. And that's before Simeon. He knew about it. He showed up and he revealed that. So we get to see what others don't see in the dark. And it can seem like it's a dark world today. But through the Holy Spirit and through God, he revealed, he opens up our eyes to see what others don't see. I have the habit of seeing things hope to see things how they really are, now as they're really presented. So, and then really where I could see, what we want to see what God's really doing, even in a place that's in, dark, in darkness. Because God's always working. God's always moving. And our job, in a way, is to find out exactly what he's doing and join him in his work. And that's exciting. So we get to see what others don't see. So one, Jesus is the salvation of God. Two, Jesus is the revelation of God. Last one is because this story, this, this sermon series is called Christmas Sunday, which it is. Sunday is Christmas. The glory of God. Jesus is the glory of God. It says in 32b, and for the glory of your people Israel. Now, it's for Israel nowadays, not for the glory of your people now, right? Uh, Jesus is the glory of God, the expansion, the radiance of God um, for all people to see, the exact replica or the same, the exact, one for the exact uh, imprint of, of who God is. You want to know who God is? It's through Jesus. But the glory of God, that radiance that we walk around. I love the scripture in Hebrews 1, 3. He says, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. I love that. He's the radiance of the glory of God radiance, bright light in a dark place. The exact imprint of his nature. Everyone says, who is, who is God look like? It's through Jesus. And who does Jesus look like? Through us. The exact imprint. How God created us and how Jesus is the radiance of God. He upholds the universe by the word of his power, which he uh, sustains us by the word of his power. Sometimes I always have this saying that it seems like things are falling apart, but when God is upholding us, it's actually falling in his place the way he wants it. And that's what Christmas does. We get to realize Christmas um, more than just a story that we celebrate or a baby that was born or presents that we receive. We really look at the exact gift we have, the, the perfect gift we have, which is Jesus, who's the salvation of God, who's Jesus, which is the revelation of God. And last one, is Jesus, who's the glory of God. And when you look at that story and you look at the very gift that gives you 
um, so much joy, internal joy, not external joy. Because really what I wrote down is the most important thing why we have Jesus today is because of the love of God. Jesus is the expression of God's love toward us. We were lost. We were hopeless without hope. We need a, a Savior. And we need a Savior that can identify with us, that can also will die for us, who will take our place for what we, we were deserved. And God set up his son, his only begotten son to come because he loves us. Even when we didn't love him, he loved us first, which gives us our response is love, which I'm saying is a famous scripture. We look at it all the time in John chapter 3, um, verse 16 and 17. I hope as I read it today, it will ha give you a revelation of God's love. Even if you're sitting out here and you're in, in a place during Christmas and feeling alone, you got to realize God loves you. That's why he put this whole plan in action. It says this, for God so loved the world. Now, we talked about Israel, but it's really the world that he gave. Perfect gift. He gave. God gave. God is a giver. That is his nature to give. I mean, you know, that's a perfect gift receiving from Jesus. His only son, his only son. For whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The gift of life of Christ. So Jesus was the light and the life of the world. We have an eternal life. If you're born again and you're walking with Jesus, you have eternal life. What a gift. The gifts I received as a kid, I can't remember what they were. I remember they were fun. I remember the bicycles I've had. I remember when we were running around. It didn't matter if it snowed in New York. We got on, that, on our bicycles and we rode into snow drifts because we wanted to get on it and exciting. But after a while, when you grow up, it kind of wears out. And eternal life never wears out. It's forever. Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world because he loves the world. But in order that the world might be saved through him. I want to encourage you this year and the last few years. It seems like things are getting dark. But yet we get a chance to realize, to tell people that it was a perfect gift that was given over 2,000 years ago that will take the darkness and turn into light. And that perfect gift really to a broken and dark world is the light of the unbroken sun. Jesus is whole. He makes us whole. Jesus came for all because he values all. Jesus came for you. He came for me because he values you. In a world that needs more love, not more law, in a world that seems dark, there's really a light that's shining that's in each and, each and, not, in each and every one of us, a light that we can share this light and encourage people you might not get a car. It's not the car. It's not anything else. But the perfect gift that was over 2,000 years ago became a light, became the life, who is the life in the light of our world. I really want to say Merry Christmas and let you know that Jesus loves you. The expression of God's love. God loves us so much. He sent the perfect gift, his only son. He didn't say, oh, I can't give my best. He gave the very best because we couldn't give it to a broken. If you're broken hearted today, that's why Jesus came. If you feel alone, that's why Jesus came. If you feel depressed, that's why Jesus came. To bring light into, your, into the darkness of your life. To bring light into the darkness of our world. That's the most amazing thing. Why? Because God says, Salvation must come. And I need my son to be revealed on the earth. And people need to realize and enjoy the very glory of God. And I pray you enjoy this, this morning, Christmas morning. It's an amazing day. Enjoy yourself. Have fun, family. But look at the perfect gift. We see it on the trees and all the different gifts. But the perfect gift that we received is Jesus Christ. The light of the world who's in us. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning for everyone that's listening online. Lord, I pray that you just bless them. Father, I thank you for those who have served this, this year. 
to remind them why they're serving, to bring light to a dark world, to be light to people's souls. Father, I pray you give them peace. I pray you give them your joy. I pray you give them your rest. And Father, we praise you and we thank you for the perfect gift that continues to get better and better and better. Let us see with the lights, lights of the Holy Spirit. Let us see light in the darkness. You in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Merry Christmas. The book of Acts is marked by the miraculous. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, God used miracles to bless his people and advance his kingdom. In 2023, we're believing God for miracles that will testify of his love and power so we can know him and let him be known.